God. Yes, good morning, all our followers. Um, I, I hope I, you didn't catch me saying anything bad there because I couldn't hit the right button. We're in a situation that's quite different this morning. Not only do we have the joy of uh, Pat McGart, but we have, we're joined by a man called Stephen Kelly. Now, Stephen is the uh, CEO of um, Manufacturing and I. Is that right, Stephen? That's correct. And he's, he's also uh, had a, a pretty important role in terms of, uh, was it the movement of uh, university, Ulster University from Jordanstown to Belfast, or, or was it the case for Derry getting that campus? So the British and Irish governments came together back in 2020 and agreed a uh, new decade, new approach. And in that, the agreement was that they would ask the executive to bring forward a plan to expand Ulster University's campus in Derry to 10,000 students. Mm -hmm. uh, over the preceding four years, COVID, executive up and down, nothing really happened on that. And then earlier this year, Jude, uh, the executive reformed, as you know, and Conor Murphy became the minister. And his first act as minister was to uh, establish a task force, of which he asked me to be the chairperson of, yeah. uh, to, to bring forward that commitment that was made in NDNA. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, as I understand it, but maybe I'm wrong, uh, 10,000 new students or 10,000 students won't, that's a target that won't be met in Derry. Is that right? Uh, no, it's not, it's not right. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's what you're uh, here for. That's what, that's what we're here for. Uh, the, the task force was established to to meet that commitment. Uh, what we've done, Jude, and yourself and Pat have probably read over a million reports between yourselves, but we uh, we were tasked with bringing forward an action plan before the end of the year, but we decided that we were going to record what we'd heard to that point mm -hmm. and actually move it on a bit further. So just a couple of weeks ago, we published our interim report, which records what people have told us, both the department, the university, uh, and a variety of other partners. Uh, and we've moved it further forward by making almost about 30 asks, asks of Conor Murphy and his department, asks of the executive, asks of the Irish and British governments, asks of others in order to, to meet that target. Yeah. Um, um, Stephen, who, Stephen, who, Stephen who, I, I just, uh, go uh, ahead, Pat, you go, go ahead. I was going to. No, Stephen, no, uh, uh, like, by the way, let's get someone on the record. Uh, this is a contentious issue in Derry, but so I want to put something on the record. Right your personal integrity doesn't come into this, and any questions we're asking, mm. Stephen Kelly, I, I know of you, and you're, you're a decent person, and you're a man of honour, so don't take anything personal. And you know his dad as well. I knew his dad as well. But here's the thing. A lot of people in Derry don't trust the University of Ulster. They don't trust the department. They don't trust Sturman. And, and if you read... The utterances of the Derry University Group and newspapers like the Derry Journal and so on. As you know, Stephen, there's a long history of distrust between Derry and Stormont. And for good reason. Um, you're sitting at McGee, but maybe it's four and five thousand students, and people in Derry look down the road and see Limerick with whatever twenty thousand, Gal Galway with twenty five thousand, whatever it is. You can know you've heard it all before, Stephen. And Derry sitting with about four thousand students, and even at that, the University of Ulster won't allow an audit to prove exactly how many are there. So why should uh, people in Derry trust anything that Stormont says or the University of Ulster? I think that uh, distrust is well founded. Uh, I think there's been. Uh, successive governments have said, successive university leaderships have said, uh, yes, we agree with this, yes, we're going to do this, but actually don't do anything actually about it. Uh, in fact, there's uh, one of the pieces of work that we've done is actually to look at, well, why have things been promised but never delivered? What are the points yeah. of failure? Where has, where has the leadership fallen down? Where has the commitment not materialized because people say one thing and either do nothing or do the opposite? Stephen, so what, give us what a couple of done, examples of that where they've fallen down, would you? Well, in the previous previous number of, uh, specifically to this project, the previous numbers of vice chancellors have said that they agreed with the expansion of the university, but then in reality did the opposite. Uh, there, how much did uh, they say? How much they wanted it? Did they, did they have the 10,000 figure in mind or was it something else? It was 9,200. It was 9,200. 
uh, which was a number that they said that they accepted. Uh, but you've accepted that, but you see that was fair enough. No, is the short answer to that. Mm -hmm. uh, but they, uh, it, it's all very well to say things, but it only really matters when you do things. Yeah. So what we decided to do was go about actually understanding a couple of things. One is where are the singular points of failure, identify what those were, and ensure that actions are in place to stop that failure being repeated. Mm. The second thing we did was to look at every piece of evidence that had been provided that made the case for dairy. Uh, and every single document that was produced up until now was all about why and nothing about how. So if you're doing an action plan, if you're delivering a project, whether it's a project in your garden or whether it's developing a university to 10,000 students, you need to plan and put in place the resources that are required in order to deliver it. So that's what we've been busily doing for the last number of months. Uh, commitments were made by vice chancellors in writing and in public, but actually it never moved beyond just the control of the vice chancellor and everyone else. So what we've started to do is actually build the structures in place that beds this in. So it's not just about getting it started, but about trying to make it sticky. So step through this just, just to kind of demonstrate this for you. NDNA was a commitment that the British and Irish governments made. It was never a commitment that the executive made. Mm -hmm. We now have a commitment in the programme for government. It has a couple of offending words, which will be changed, and that will be uh, more solid. We have asked that our report, and more particularly our action plan, which we'll publish by the end of the year, is actually the programme for government commitment. So now it's an entire executive commitment. The second thing is the we asked the department to tool up, to create a team. So there's a team of people, a brand new division within the department, whose job it is is only to work on the expansion of this university. Mm -hmm. The third thing is, take this away from just the, the current vice chancellor of the university, whoever that may well be now or into the future. The university themselves have established a team for the first time. So it now is something that's bedded in to all the structures that are required in order to ensure that you get some sort of delivery. Mm -hmm. So, yes. could, Stephen, I know the one thing is that uh, this is the whole thing about <coughs> scrutiny, you've you just had on it there, and that's what brought it to mind. Uh, the, and the South, they have a higher education authority and so on. And the South, everybody looks to the South now because it's delivered big time. And they started a university uh, down in Limerick about, what, 30 years ago, and it's now far, far bigger than McGee. Uh, the, Leonard Kenny, Sligo and me we all get, got together, and it's now the Atlantic Technical University. In fact, Better Kenny only became a university what a couple of years ago and it's already got apparently getting or has got a veterinary college. You know, when people are sitting saying, like in the north, there is no uh scrutiny body, the universities do as they please, when they please. And so, Stephen, here's here's what I'm really getting at. How come Belfast has 93 or is it 83 percent of these the third level students has got about 93 percent of the capital spend and infrastructure spend? And Derry sitting was absolutely bugger all. And it's it's uh, you, people are sort of saying, wait a minute, Stephen Kelly might be a very decent fella, and we all know his dad played for Derry City and a great family and all this. But has Stephen been sent to do a job, uh, to sort of um, blow smoke our direction, say he's going to deliver? That's that's a problem as uh, this whole thing because of the history, Stephen. You could yeah, uh, history, and we, we cover. Sorry, go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, we 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 cover this in our interim report, uh, where we say and we remind people of the commitments that they've made. And if they wish to maintain in their integrity beyond this point, then they need to stand up and deliver on this stuff. Just a point of clarity. This isn't my report. This is a report of the task force. That includes the trade unions. That includes the community and voluntary sector. That includes uh, the business community. That includes people on a cross-border basis. That includes officials in Dublin as well as officials in Belfast. Uh, so that isn't Stephen Kelly's report. And, the, and if people are serious that those people aren't serious about getting this job done, then I can understand scepticism, but they're really talking about the integrity of, of the whole of civic society in the Northwest. Uh -huh. uh, and that's unfair yeah. and it's uncalled for. Well, you're absolutely you've... correct. There should not be 83%. And in fact, in some of the numbers, I used to think those numbers are worse than what they look at. They're actually closer to 85%. That should not, that does not serve the North well. They have the concentration of our, uh, university students within two square miles in Belfast city centre mm -hmm. doesn't serve my members and my day job in the northwest or in mid-Ulster or anywhere else in the north doesn't serve. You said Stephen that the executive have com uh, committed to this uh, has the Ulster University committed to this? They have. So well, have they said report, what courses are going to put in place? 
Yeah, they've already said that they're expanding. So they, the model here is what they call the... Well, what courses? Uh, the, the model is what they call the four faculties. So it's an entire university structure, which will include uh, the humanities as well as the sciences, which will include uh, sport and other uh, built environment, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's 121 programs currently run at the McGee campus. That's been expanded from this year. There's 5,711 students studying on the campus as of uh, the university beginning their, their academic year just now. Uh, and the expansion will continue as we reach that 10,000 number, which is what we've already agreed. And we're brilliant in the north at doing this, where we go, what do you want? What do you want? This is what we demand. And then you find agreement and then they go, oh, we want to change what we want. We want to change what our agreement is. We're very much seeing this as a stepping stone. As Pat has rightly said, there's cities elsewhere on the island that have significantly more student, they have a bigger student population. Derry's ambitions are higher than 10,000 and rightly so. Our job is to create a new floor rather than creating a ceiling. That's our job and that's what we're trying to do. No, in 2006, I think there was a report, if I remember correctly, Stephen, said the, the focus of uh, expansion should be on McGee only. And then suddenly 300 million gets spent on a new campus in Belfast. By the way, a, a campus that I don't ever recall that there was a campaign for or anything, but suddenly it seemed to be developer-led rather than academic-led. Is, is sure the whole problem could be in Derry, something similar, that uh, there's all, all this thing, there's no accommodation for starters. There's only 5,000 students. So like, what comes first? Is there sort of a question of build it and they will come? Or what's happening, you know, is, is, the, is Derry going to get strangled both ways because there's no accommodation? So where do you put the students? And then the other way, if you don't have the students, why build the accommodation? So it's it's both of those things should run coterminous. That's, that's the argument. If you're increasing your numbers, then you need to increase your infrastructure. People need a place to be taught. University academics need a place to work from. You need research facilities in order to make the campus attractive to academics to come and want to work in there and to take that research and turn it into teaching so that we create the new academics of the future or the new engineers or the new scientists or the new uh, philosophers or whatever the case may be. So it, it's a case of both running concurrently. Unlike Belfast, and, and, and I've been involved with lots of major projects in the past as well, uh, the campus at Jordanstown was reaching the end of its natural life Ah, well, it needed hold on to a minute, be replaced. Stephen. What, what do you choice, mean by that? Choice, let me just what finish. do you mean by that? Me, uh, reaching, reaching the end of its natural life. I taught there for 30 years. And it's one of the ugliest buildings I've ever worked in. But I never thought at any stage that it was inadequate in terms of its uh, you know, offices or classrooms or anything like that. And it was quite a surprise to me whenever I discovered that the campus was moving. <laughs> now, I'm not saying it wasn't a, a, a pretty fine thing to do, but it was also a hugely costly thing to do. And I'm not I, sure it was absolutely necessary. But you feel that I, the Jordan's trying to reach the end of its natural life? All, all buildings reach the end of their natural life. Uh, and if, if I give an example, that campus in Jordanstown is one of the top 25 carbon emitters anywhere in the anywhere in Northern Ireland. So as we're, we're moving into a more decarbonized age, you need to change uh, how you operate. Was the move from Jordanstown into Belfast at the expense of Derry? I absolutely agree that it was. Uh, was the move from Jordanstown to move 10,000 students into Belfast city centre? Uh, did that overtake what other commitments were in terms of the development of the Northwest and the development of the McGee campus? I absolutely agree that it was. Uh, but we can't dwell on what happened in the past. Mm -hmm. We can only dwell on and we can only work towards what we want to do in the future. And the job that we're doing is about reducing then the uh, it's not just about increasing the number of students in the northwest but it's actually also about reducing the number of students there in belfast and we've seen that that's already happening the only campus of ulster university for instance that's growing is the mcgee campus there's a thousand less students in belfast this year than there were two years ago uh, those students have been moved into the northwest and that that journey will continue and equally now uh, there's roughly about 885 Irish students that travel from the south to the to educational institutions in the north, we're likely to see that continue to grow, particularly as the cost of accommodation and others, and other factors in in Dublin in particular, uh, are 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 becoming an increasing problem. But deal with the student accommodation thing as an example. What you're seeing in Belfast, that part of North Belfast, is private led investment. 
people seeing an opportunity and going for that. Derry has a housing problem, full stop. There's 7,500 people on a housing waiting list. We also have an increasing student population. And that's an opportunity rather than actually a problem. That's an opportunity for developers to come in and actually take uh, properties that they've maybe been hanging on to for a long while, sites and, and locations across the city, and actually begin to transform the city. And that's exactly what you want. We should not be leaving this to either Stormont or the university themselves in terms of its development. But, but surely you said earlier on that the executive had already <laughs> sanctioned this and, uh, you know, now it was official. Are you suggesting that it's not really official that there are people who are got to buy into it, otherwise it's not going to happen? No, it's official. So the the uh, the money involved is actually about a total investment opportunity for the city. So if we kind of break that money down, and, and I, I heard your previous broadcast on this, uh, there's a figure of about £700 million uh, of investment. Investments are positive things, not negative things. Uh, of that, roughly about £280 million is the opportunity cost in terms of change in the, the accommodation in the city, providing accommodation for students, re reformatting how the city centre looks. That leaves us roughly about four hundred, four hundred fifty million, in terms of uh, roughly about four hundred million in terms of what the infrastructure on the campus needs to be. Of that, about one hundred and fifty-two million has already been committed. <coughs> Excuse me, and more money on the way. So sitting here today, there's a gap of about two hundred and fifty million pounds, and we cover that in our interim report, and we say that the commitment needs to be there from the Department for the Economy from the Department for Health, the Department for Infrastructure and others in terms of uh, ensuring that that's delivered. And if they don't, the credibility of the people who agreed to NDNA and agreed to the Programme for Government calls, uh, comes into question. And every engagement I've had with a government minister, whether it's from Sinn Féin, whether it's from other parties, have all been, this is our commitment. We want to get this done. Well, Stephen, uh, can I move you sideways a wee bit? Um... I've read quite a lot of stuff from the Derry University group and they seem less, what would you say? Well, cynical is probably the word about government commitments. In fact, they point to the Royal Irish Academy, uh, Jerry McKenna's uh, report or uh, findings recently. One of the findings of which was that uh, a cross-border independent uh, university for the Northwest would be possibly you know, create a corridor between Derry and Letterkenny uh, would be the way, the way to go. Uh, the Irish government has already promised, what is it, 40 million uh, and to McGee. The, the status already of the ATU in Larry Kenny is rising at a rapid rate. What do you say to the people say, look, we have had 83% of the infrastructure, or sorry, 83% of the student numbers in Belfast. We have had, what, 93% of the spend in Belfast. Derry is still at about four or 5,000 pupils. Surely we've had enough uh, in the past about promises and delivery and all the rest and so on and so on. And we're going over the whole same ground. Would we not be better off uh, taking the RIA's approach and saying, look, wait a minute, the natural corridor uh, here is, uh, natural hinterland for Gary is Donegal, all, always has been. At, uh, and the, the partition of Ireland has created a massive problem. Here's an opportunity to redress a historic imbalance by going for a Letterkenny dairy link up. So there, there's a lot in what, that's a very short question there, Pat, and there's a lot in it. Uh, <laughs> Give me 10 minutes to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to navigate myself away from that. The first thing to say is that uh, Letterkenny has succeeded, but it's flatlined. In fact, the number of students in Letterkenny over the last couple of years has actually declined rather than actually grown, whilst at the same time the campus in Derry is growing. It's 5,700 full-time students on the campus this year. The second thing to say is that uh, Connor Murphy's already leaned in and started to support this. So there's £17 million in this current year, of which... 500 direct intervention only on the McGee campus, additional students. So the, one of the broken promises in the past was that they needed to deal with what's called the Mazing cap, which is the maximum yeah. allowed student numbers. Mm -hmm. Connor Murphy stepped in and said, I'm breaking that cap. And I'm breaking that cap with a direct intervention into the dairy project. So there's 500 additional students there, as well as, uh, as, as, well as about 14 million pounds for capital and spend. <coughs> Excuse me. The Irish government haven't spent a penny yet. They've committed to they spend have money. Committed to it. Uh, uh, hold on, Stephen. They have committed to it. 
And it's more that the, Derry, uh, the uh, Dublin government have committed nearly more to McGee than uh, Starmont has. So that's what it was coming to. You can only measure like with like. So at this point in time, they've committed it, but the, but the cheque has not been sent. Equally, yeah. Stormont has committed to this. Equally, Ulster University has committed 50 million of their own money. So what we need to look at is what actually is turns up rather than what's actually been committed. Do the Irish government, are, are they serious about supporting this? Absolutely. They wouldn't have spent that money or committed that money to the McGee campus, nor indeed the A5 or other projects, unless yeah. they were serious about it. But the one uh, thing in that terms of the, in terms, you know, just seen. finish off Pat's, yeah. Pat's ten on a question. <laughs> <laughs> just finish off Pat's ten on a question there. The Royal Irish Academy report says a lot of things, but it actually only has one action, and the one action is that they need more research. That's the when you read through the entire report, and you were there and I were there, Pat, at the at the launch of it in ATU and Letter Kenny. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. that's the action. And at this point in time, neither the Irish government nor Stormont has been asked to actually carry forward that action. So there are other models. We deal with that in our report. We don't say uh, that they that they don't have validity. We don't say that these are models that are uh, not possible or models that that are that are irrelevant. It's quite the opposite. We say we share the same ambition that other people have for this part of the island, and we want to see that delivered. When you say other, can models, I really annoy you? Stephen, can, I, 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 sorry, Jude, can I really oh, annoy oh. you by, by by going on here? It's just well, like I see people in there saying, "Where's the John Hume, you know, uh, uh, peace studies? And where's the Martin McGuinness uh, co- uh, conflict studies? Where's the Neil McCafferty, Brian Friedel uh, departments? Where's you know any anybody you can think on Seamus Heaney and so on? Everything has been moved to Belfast, and uh, but you're everything you're saying, Stephen, seems very reasonable and all the rest of it. But the, the historic thing, and if you read Garrett Harrigan's book about what's gone on in the past, you know, uh, the RAA came along with a report and says, look, wait a minute, the best thing for Derry is a link up with uh, possibly Letterkenny, Slagel, Mayo, Galway uh, uh, University, not a link up with the UU, where uh, it's been historically the most one-sided uh, relationship in history. Sorry, Jim. So, so uh, again, a couple of things on that. So the author of that report actually reduced proportionately the student numbers in Derry in terms of that campus model. So that's the first thing to say. Second thing to say well, how is... Do you mean, how do you mean, Stephen? Explain that. So on, on, under the... under the So the report author for the RIA, yeah. the number of students proportionately in the Derry campus reduced rather than increased. In the light that's of the, the report of the RIA? No, in, in under his leadership. So that's the first thing to say. Under his Second thing to say I, is I, sorry, I don't, Stephen, don't understand it. What do you mean? So under mean? the the author the author of the report the RIA report Professor yeah. Jerry McKenna, when he was vice chancellor of the university, proportionately the number of students studying at McGee in terms of Ulster University reduced rather than grew. So yeah, but, we've got to we've got to work on the basis of what's oh, real okay. here and, and not not what ambitions are. Second thing to say is, the RIA report, the second one which develops out from the first report they've done, talks about governments on either side of the border funding their own pieces. So we have a commitment of 45 million euros from the Irish government to support the development of Ulster University's campus in Derry, but that report says that they should be supporting their third level education in Donegal and not in Derry. So we just need to be careful what we're asking for here. The last thing to say uh, on this is, we are planning on a cross-border basis. We have the president, or sorry, the chief executive and principal of Atlantic Technical University in Letterkenny on our board. We have a representative of the Irish Department for Further and Higher Education on our board. This is planned on a cross-border basis. Why? Because as has been repeatedly said, and you know better than most, Pat, we are a single community here. We behave and operate as a single community. 300 yards from where I'm sitting, I get my diesel and I get my milk and I play golf further on down that coast. Yeah, I have sure. a sister that lives the other side of that border. We're a single mm-hmm. economic community and cultural community here, and we need to plan for education on that basis uh, as well. Well, has the notion that as part of um, the RIA have uh, projected the idea of a new university, uh, a, a different from, uh, similar in a way as we like Derry City and IFA and the FAI, uh, it has a independent or university or maybe one linking in with the National University of Ireland, has that been proposed or pushed 
Because that seems to me, if that happened, it would have all sorts of, I think, positive implications. When we were, uh, when I was teaching the University of Ulster, we used to have out centres in Derry, and we used to get students coming across from Donegal. But they, they always, you got the feeling that they wanted to have their own uh, university rather than ours, and they some of them tended to turn to Sligo. But I, I think this is, I mean, I'm an outsider, but this is, it seems to me, a massive opportunity to really put flesh on the bones of an all-Ireland future. Uh, if you have a university which is thriving, where students come from the South and or from the Irish Republic and from the North, that's going to have an impact. People will see cooperation working and working in terms of the present and the future. Uh, and I'm just wondering if, if your group, Stephen, are pushing for that or, or, if, or if you are saying, well, actually what we'll do is we'll accommodate the you, the students from Donegal and so on, but it'll still be the university, Ulster University campus in Derry. So the NDNA commitment is black and white. It's the growth of the Ulster University campus, including the graduate entry medical school, uh, to 10,000 students. Uh, there are students crossing that border all the time. There are staff crossing that border uh, all the time to work in, in there. Letterkenny has now a university, was a technical college, it's been upgraded to a university. So that's uh, that growth is is uh, is important as well. But we're not asked, it's not in our uh, it's not what's been agreed in terms of NDNA, but we say that other ambitions are important, that other models that people have and wish they have are important. I I and the, the task force have been given a job to do which to deliver what's already been agreed. Anything that's beyond that is up for others. And I may join that campaign once I get this job done. It's up to others to ensure uh, that those new models are brought forward. But at this point in time, there's one report which says we need more research rather than an actual, that's the only action that's in that report. What about the uh, research? Uh, if I remember correctly, <laughs> Jerry McKenna of the RAA said, uh, McGee will not prosper as long as it's tied to, Bel and I could be putting words in his mouth, but I'm pretty certain that's what he said, or words to that effect that uh, basically Derry won't pro uh, prosper as long as it's tied to the University of Ulster. What, what say you to that, Stephen? I, I think all the past evidence has proven that to be true, but we're in a different environment now. And the first, the first reference to a task force to actually take forward this piece of work came from Derry City Council, I think it was back in, in 2017. I need to Google it again. Uh, yeah. The Derry City Council have been asking for uh, and that was the that was to deliver what was a previous plan for nine thousand two hundred students that was then upgraded yeah. and and locked in in terms of NDNA, but this is something that's come from the ground up in the northwest. It's been a sixty year sewer that has blighted yeah. the northwest, mm. and uh, I and we need to get that done. Uh, you, you asked earlier about where's the Hume University, the McGuinness Peace Centre, or the Heaney. Library, etc. Et or the Dean, Dean School of Literature, there, or the Neil yeah. McCafferty School of Journalism. Whatever, whatever yeah. those things whatever. are, we 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 have a specific session in our meeting in November, which talks about attractiveness. So, students are like all consumers; they they choose where they put their capital down. They choose which yeah. shop they go to, which bar they frequent, uh, what holiday they take, what car that they drive, etc., etc., etc. And we've got to make the Northwest as attractive as possible for those. And quite clearly, there are unique. There's a unique proposition that should be available to the, to the McGee campus, which is our connection with those iconic figures, whether it's in literature or politics or others, uh, and that's something we were we were very keen to explore, and we'll come through in terms of our action plan at the end of the year. Stephen, would you uh, um, be happy if the present situation, where the development of McGee campus as a campus of Ulster University? was to be successful and the targets that have been set have been achieved? Or would you rather see what Pat has suggested and the RIA has suggested that you really would have impetus if you had a new university which straddled the border and where students felt they belonged to it completely and the gaze would be turned away from Belfast, which you yourself have said, I think, uh, isn't really a good thing in terms of Derry students. So, our job is to get the 10,000 as quickly as we possibly can. Uh, once we get 
to that commitment, as I've said earlier, that's a new floor which is created rather than a new ceiling. Other models are available beyond that. Very, very happy with those. But what we've got to, got to work in is the realms of what's real and what's not real. So we know that there's a peak in terms of uh, pupils becoming of university age in 2028, 2029. So there's about 15,000 young people in the north uh, of university age in 2028, 2029. And it begins to decline as populations of decli as population declines as uh, the population gets older. So that's our marketplace. There's about a thousand that travel north. There's next to none that travel across from GB into any institution in the north, whether it's Queen's, whether it's Ulster University or any of the other colleges. So we've got to work, work with what's actually available to us. Once we're finished this work, there'll be more pupils, more students in Ulster University outside of Belfast than in Belfast, but it still doesn't fundamentally change that imbalance. There's other institutions in Belfast, whether it's Queen's University Belfast uh, or others, uh, that, that will carry the bulk of the student numbers in Northern Ireland. We've got to make sure that Derry and the Northwest become so attractive that people choose and want to choose there rather than the option of going to Belfast so that we're in that marketplace that people will go and put their capital down in Derry rather than putting the capital down in Belfast. Hmm. Stephen, Stephen, if you, you had to say to people like the Derry, Derry University the Group, uh, who, sorry, okay. go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Keep it last no, no. What, would say, what would you say, thank you. <laughs> now, what would you say, Stephen, to the people uh, in the Derry University Group who at this stage uh, have totally lost faith, so I don't believe a word you um, use says and so on. And they're like, it's quite obvious. They, they said you've had 60, and I don't mean you personally, uh, that the EU has had 60, 70 years to do something, hasn't done it. In fact, McGee was going down the pan until they started a campaign to up it. And, and now they're getting all these sort of, uh, you know, uh, this report saying that the X, Y, and Z is going to happen. But there's no scrutiny in the north. Uh, if Paul Barthelemy disappears in the morning, and maybe Connor Murphy disappears in the morning. We, I know you're going to go back to this one, but like, where's it locked in? That's go this is going to happen. And by the way, I notice you keep saying that this is a floor ten thousand. A lot of people keep pointing, and I'm going to point it out once again too. Limerick uh, only up and running about thirty years, way way ahead of the game. <laughs> so, so you're right. I mean, we're we're uh, we're we're asked. So I'll go back to the beginning of this. So the first place you begin is, why has this failed so many times in the past? You identify what those single points of failure were and you put interventions in place to stop it repeating itself. So those interventions are Programme for Government, the investment strategy for Northern Ireland, the establishment of a new division within the department, the establishment of a growth uh, team within also the university themselves. It's locked into the university strategy. Uh, it's locked into the regional strategy in terms of, of dairy as well. So there's a series of things that lock this in for the longer term. The second thing is uh, that uh, the scrutiny piece. So I heard Professor McKenna give his evidence to Derry City Council last week, and he said that the role of the, the scrutineers, and that's not what he called it, but an independent uh, body, would be to advise the minister. All of this has failed in the past because the minister's taken certain choices. So if the minister is advised, but the minister still makes their his or her own decisions. It doesn't change anything. It's an additional level of bureaucracy at worst. Uh, it could be completely ignored. And we saw all that whenever the UK and Irish governments agreed the NDNA, the first action from the then minister, which wasn't Conor Murphy, but another minister, was that they, they went, oh, yeah, we, we know this is agreement in place, but we have other ideas ourselves. Okay, so sorry, sorry Stephen, we've just commission. got one minute, just over one minute left. <laughs> Can I ask you one question? Say in 15 years' time, would you prefer to see a burgeoning, um, alive, uh, filled with students campus of Ulster University in Derry? Or would you like to see, uh, prefer to see uh, a bustling, active campus, which would be of a new university straddling uh, the border and uh, including Letterkenny, maybe Sligo as well? I, I have no preference in any of that. Really? I have a job to do. Really? Just, you're I, you're, you're job, a Jerry man, you have no preference for, for, for either. My my job is to get the 10,000 students as quickly <laughs> as we possibly can. I know your once job now, but we're saying what your preference would be. Once, once we get to the 10,000 students as quickly as we possibly can, I'll back out at that point. I'm doing this for free. And I don't want to continue uh, doing that for free beyond that point. Where, where my own position 
question is in terms of uh, what future models look like. The model needs to be laid out. It's not been done so far. There's very concepts. Quickly, Stephen, we're just about to cut off. Nothing more than that. Okay. Stephen, thanks Honestly, very much. We'll have to just leave it that. Thank you very much, Stephen, for coming. You, uh, thanks very you, much. Just, it's a world of thought. Far more thought than we would have got if just been Pat McGard as usual. <laughs> so thanks very much for coming, Stephen. Thanks, okay. Stephen. Thank All the best. Talk to you again. All the best, Stephen. Thank you.